shelter you little ears if you will listen you will hear the truth you will hear the truth it's a big Well, twice a year, uh, for years now, we've been having a child dedication here at Northside. And uh, I've been thinking that probably for me, this is probably my 36th. Uh, for some of you, just because I know how long you've been around here, it's probably about your 56th. And so uh, I understand we've had a lot of these, but every single child dedication just has a significant meaning, doesn't it? Every one of these. It doesn't grow old. We don't get tired of it. Because babies are so stinking cute. And so we just love it. And especially up here, we were just going down the row six months, four months, six months, four months, six months. Uh, that's how that worked. In other words, they all spent a lot of time in the hospital together. And, uh, man, we're just so excited for these families that are standing up before us today because uh, they're standing here doing several things. Number one, confirming their love for God. That God is the first in their life, and, and they love him first and foremost. Number two, they're clarifying ownership. That these children belong to God. They are just stewards of what God has given them as parents. And third, they are committing themselves to raise these children in the truth and grace of Jesus. They are saying, we're going to be spiritually engaged in our children's lives because uh, somebody's going to engage their kids, but they're going to engage in their kids' lives and do that spiritually. And so just watching them do that today, what a thrill for us as a church, uh, something that we never grow tired of uh, because time goes so fast. You know, it was um, at our marriage date night that Ted Cunningham, when he was here, re revealed something that they have in their church. They, the, the families that uh, are having children in their church, they give them a jar of marbles. There's 936 marbles in the jar representing one week of their child's lives from, from the time they're born until the time they're 18. And they just encourage their families to take a marble out of the jar every year. 936 seems like a lot of marbles, but as those of you who have had kids before who are over the age of 18, how many of you would agree that time flies by? It goes by very, very fast, you know, before you know it. And I know that's already happening for these parents that stand before us. Every one of these parents standing here today have already been in a child dedication before with a previous child. Time, time is going by so fast. You know, that's why the Bible tells us to number our days. Uh, because it, it goes so quickly. And we want to take every opportunity to invest in our kids as, as we can. And, and one of the things I like about the jars that they distribute is at the top it says control and at the bottom it says influence because when our kids are young, we can control them. You know, when you want them, no, you go here. You know, we, we can physically pick them up and move them. As they become teenagers, it moves to influence, doesn't it? It's not control, it's influence, which is why they say when you take a marble out every year, when you lose your marbles, you lose control. That's kind of what it, what it means and... That's kind of how it works. So I just want to introduce to you our families that are standing up here today uh, participating in this dedication. And uh, the first couple that we have here, well, first of all, this is Hudson Maverick Boone. Uh, this is the son of Austin and Lisa Boone. And next to them, we've got Creed Porter Bryant. And this is the son of TJ and Bailey Bryant. And then next, we have Reuben Matthew Hazeltine, and this is the son of Matthew and Aaron Hazeltine, and then we've got over here Ryland Jack McShane, and uh, this is the son of Andrew and Kira McShane, <laughs> yeah, he's rocking it there with that smile, and then we've got Kinsey Ann Thompson, and this is the daughter of Corey and Krista Thompson as well. And the, this is a very attentive group up here, which I'm glad because I got some things I, I just want to share with them. And, uh, and I just want to talk to our families really quick because it, it was just after Christmas. It was just after Christmas when, when uh, the parents of Jesus, when he was 40 days old, took him to the temple to present him to the Lord. It's recorded in Luke chapter 2, verse 22. In other words, it was about this time in his life when they were 
going to the temple to present him. They were doing what the law commanded, to give their first to God. It reminded them of the Exodus when God delivered his people, that they were his people. They were, he was their God, and they were to give their first to him. And that's what you're doing today. You're standing here before this family of believers Stating that these children that God has entrusted to you, you are giving to him first. Ephesians chapter 6, 4 says in regard to your parenting, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. That's what Timothy's mother and grandmother did for him when Paul, in referencing these women in his life, says from infancy, Timothy, you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. In other words, they took the responsibility to raise him up in the scriptures so that he would know his God. And that's a responsibility God has given you as parents, that you would raise your children, train them up in the word of God so that they will have every opportunity as they grow older to know the truth and the grace of Jesus, that they will understand their need for a Savior so that when they come under conviction of sin, they too can respond like every Every person responded in Scripture to this news of Jesus. And so we want to challenge you as parents to pray with your children. Read Scripture with your children. Talk about the Lord with your children. Worship consistently with your children. Connect them into the life of the church, the small groups of the church, the ministry of the church, and commit wholeheartedly to follow Jesus so that you can be their best example. You know, that's what Hannah was. To her son Samuel. Hannah was one who came and brought him to the temple to dedicate him to the Lord's service. But we note with Hannah that long before she dedicated Samuel to the Lord's service, she herself was dedicated to the Lord. That is a great example to follow. The parents, you first be dedicated to the Lord. And then in so doing, you'll be able to dedicate your children to the Lord. So parents, today, I want to ask you at this time to make several commitments. And before this congregation, you can simply affirm by saying, we will. So parents, I want to ask you this. Before this family of believers, will you commit yourselves to bringing up your children in the training and instruction of the Lord? And parents, will you dedicate yourselves to living as a godly example before them? And will you take your responsibility seriously to pray for your children regularly, bring them to church consistently, teach them God's word accurately, and when appropriate, encourage them to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Praise God for that. And church, we have some questions for you. As a church, we will do everything possible to help these children I mean, well, help these children, yes, but to help these parents in connecting their children to Jesus through our family ministry, through teaching, through preaching, through training, will help point these kids to Jesus. And so, church, we have a responsibility, and I just want to ask these questions of you, and you can simply respond by saying we will. Do we as a church commit ourselves to family ministry, encouraging and assisting parents in the task of teaching and training them in God's Word? Church, will we? And church, will we give up our preferences in order to reach this next generation for Christ? Will we? And church, will we create a culture that loves and encourages and accepts and invests in this next generation? Will we? Praise God for that. I want to ask, if you are family that is connected to these families, would you stand if you're in the room right now and you're connected to these families, you'll stand because these families that are standing right here have an important role to play as well to encourage these parents to help influence and carry the burden to raise these children in the truth and grace of Jesus to help plug them into a community of faith. And so today I want to pray a prayer of blessing over these parents and these families today. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, We thank you for the gift of life and the gift of these children and that, God, you are blessing these families and working in these families. We want to pray your strength and your care to these families. We want to pray a blessing over them, Lord. That, Lord, just as the priests gave a blessing over your people, we give this blessing over them. That, that, Lord, we just pray that, the Lord, that you would bless them and keep them. That, Lord, 
the light of your face would shine on them, that you would be gracious to them. And Lord, we want to pray right now that you would turn your face to them and you would give them your peace, that your name would be on them. We pray that they would know the knowledge of you, that, that, that they would have the wisdom to apply that truth to their life. We pray that you give them the strength to endure, the courage to conquer fears, the patience to leave room for your spirit to work in their families and in the lives of their children. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would empower these parents to live for Jesus. They could overcome the evil one. We pray that you would grow their commitment to one another and to raising up these young men and women that they would know you. We pray your blessing over them and all God's people say, amen. Thank you. Can we just give a round of applause to these families and parents and these children today? Praise God.